All right, welcome back everyone to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. So Michelle, this is a question I know we've been getting asked a lot, which is artificial and non-nutritive sweeteners. These are things like Splenda, Stevia, monk fruit, erythritol, xylitol, aspartame, NutraSweet, you name it. We get asked about it. So let me start the conversation by what the heck are these guys? Okay, so they can all fall under the umbrella category of non-nutritive sweeteners, which basically means that they are low to no calorie sweeteners that don't have any nutritional quality to them, right? They're not providing vitamins, minerals, or calories. They're basically just providing sweetness. Um, and then they're basically, you mentioned some of the ones we think of are things like um, sucralose or aspartame are, you know, artificial sweeteners. And then people are um, ask about, okay, well, more natural artificial sweeteners like stevia, monk fruit, and then things like sugar alcohols, like erythritol, those are all used in products that would normally contain sugar because they are sweet. They provide that sweetness, but they are not, they don't have any added sugar or calories. They're either low or no calories. So they're basically used in recipes, in drinks and beverages and things like that to provide that sweetness without um, adding sugar, raising blood sugar and providing any calories. So having said all that, is there any research on artificial sweeteners specifically for kidney disease and what would be the pros and cons of someone using artificial sweeteners or non-nutritive sweeteners? So th this is a really interesting topic and, and let me explain it in a way that makes it easier for folks to understand. The first thing you got to understand is people always fall under the trap of because it's zero calories or it's very minimal calories that it might be better. So this is what you want to understand. The first thing to note is, is that these things are anywhere between 200 to as much as 26 thousand times sweeter than sugar. Now, when you're dealing with things like Splenda or Stevia, you're dealing with things that are 200 to 400 to 500 times sweeter than sugar. So what the data shows is that when you actually consume Stevia, so people tell me all the time, but it's natural. Well, there's mushrooms that are natural and they'll kill you. So let's not go with the term natural. But when you consume it, what the data shows is in my studies, the cravings for sugar actually increase. So people end up consuming more food when they take a diet Coke, for example. I have nothing against Coke. Please don't sue me. But let's say it's a diet, whatever, cola or diet drink. If you consume one of these guys that has these non-nutritive sweeteners. In animal studies, they end up consuming more of their meal than otherwise. Number two, the data shows that it completely changes your gut microbiome. It rewires the bacteria. Number three is, is it causes insulin resistance. So remember, we've talked about the three biggest things that cause kidney disease. First is weight, second is blood pressure, and third, of course, is sugars. So weight, blood pressure, sugars. Well, non-nutritive sweeteners affect all three. They cause you to gain weight, which leads to higher blood pressure. They also cause insulin resistance and elevate your blood sugars. So therefore, even though I can't definitively say that it's going to cause you to have a decline directly in kidney disease, it's going to lead to all three of the main causes that's going to lead to kidney decline. And as a result of it, Artificial and non-nutritive sweeteners as an umbrella thing are actually really, really bad for you. Number two is, is if you eat a strawberry, a strawberry will not taste sweet if you're used to eating Stevia or Splenda or any one of those guys. This is not my opinion. This is a known fact. In fact, you know, years ago when I was in med school, I was so used to drinking coffee with Stevia in it that it was so difficult for me to drink coffee without it. And it's taken me a while, but I drink my coffee without anything in it. But it took me a while to be able to switch to that. And I never knew how sweet stevia was till I read the literature. So if you're listening to this, keep in mind that mice will literally risk being shocked and still drink the water. There's a shock, and this is horrible experiments, but they will get shocked and then be able to drink water that is sweetened with these kind of non-nutritive sweeteners, and they'll still do it. That's how crazy this stuff is. What else can people do when they're trying to, you know, have something to sweeten their food? Is there other options they can think about? There's always other options. I mean, I think when you, you think about what they're typically 
used for. It's to provide sweetness. So a direct replacement would obviously be using sugar, but that's something added sugar that we're trying to be limiting as well. Um, But if you think of the foods that typically contain, you know, people are having diet sodas, um, whether it's sweetened with stevia or like aspartame, or they're having baked goods, sweets, cookies, um, treats, those sorts of things that have the artificial sweeteners. Um, Really, I would say there's a few things you can try is one, you mentioned fruit. So things like fruit or dates, I'd say those, yes, you're going to get some sugar, but you also get fiber and vitamins and minerals along with it. You're not just getting something that's either sugar or 250 times sweeter than sugar. So if you are making, um, I mean, I've made brownies before with dates and like vanilla extract and cinnamon and absolutely no added sugar. Um, and they tasted delicious and it was for my son's first birthday party. And like everyone loved them and couldn't believe there was no added sugar. So there's a lot of things like that, that you can do. I'd say, yeah, cinnamon, vanilla extract dates, or using actual like fruit. Um, those are all options of things that you can do. Um, cinnamon can add a lot of flavor. I think ultimately just like with added sugar and artificial sweeteners, the foods that they're typically used in, they're not things that you want to, or should be eating on a regular basis. It doesn't mean you can never enjoy a piece of chocolate that has either real sugar or artificial sweetener in it. Um, if you're having it every once in a while, but for that daily regular consumption, that's where you would want to, um, use something that gives you some fiber, some vitamins, minerals, things that are beneficial in addition, in addition to adding a little, um, you know, sweetness to it. So anything to add to that, Dr. Hashmi? No, the only other thing I would say is just remember, if you are used to these kind of artificial sweeteners for your tongue, the studies show it takes seven to 10 days to start changing your receptors in your tongue so that natural sweetness will start to uh, taste better. So in other words, a strawberry will taste better about seven to 10 days. But for your gut microbiome, it takes months to change the bacteria. So if you're looking to start feeling healthy, don't expect to see results in terms of bloating and other things just because you went off of artificial or non-nutritive sweeteners. That in itself can be something in terms of bowel movements and all those things. It can take months. How long? About 10 to 12 weeks is a good time frame for you to have very nice differences in all of your bowel movements, in the bloating, in the belly being flat, all those changes. So be patient. It will happen. But just because you've done it for about, you know, five to seven days, you're expecting all of these changes in how you look and feel. That's not that fast. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you for pointing that out. Give it time. Um, but again, your taste buds will change and adjust. Just like if you reduce sodium in your diet, it is they're going to change and adjust. And so with everything that we talk about on our channel, we want these to be lifestyle changes, not quick diet fixes that you do for a couple of weeks and then don't do for six months out of the year. And then you do it for a couple of weeks. We'd rather you go slow and make small changes that can then be lifelong um, than to do crazy drastic things. So there you guys have it on artificial sweeteners and we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Take care now. Bye-bye.